especially focusing uh, on Africa, why not? Uh, we are not actually relegating what happened or the events that happened at the international uh, uh, arena, but then we want to look at 2022 and the African context. Well, 2022 in the African context, I would say, like I said when I took the mic the first time, yeah. uh, that we are, you and I are talking in history today already a sign that is um, uh, a major mark in our life and that we are able to look across Africa and still see some governments whom we thought at this point in time were supposed to have gone off is still a major mark of event in Africa now when you I want to cue from where uh, uh, my brother Elijah and uh, ended there he talked about seeing in a, a, an Africa that was capable of coming out of its troubles or its difficulties and standing tall. I want to say I corroborate, but it could not be up to 70%. Because uh, all what we are saying here today is a summary of what we have been saying throughout the whole year about Africa. We have been giving solutions. We have been criticizing dictatorial governments. And we still discover that uh, one major problem Africa actually faced, I want to start by uh, highlighting this major problem that Africa faced in 2022, is this problem of uh, democracy, this problem of democracy, of which I've always been for the fact that if Africa in the 21st century cannot be able to readapt this word democracy, then they should maintain it as democracy. That is replacing the C with a Z. Why do I say so? We have seen if you look across the African continent with the number of coup d'etats that have taken place, it's a sign that our democracy has failed or we have not actually adapted it to the existing environments in Africa. Because if this were so, uh, the, the issue of the several coup d'etats, a lot of military rule, a lot of uh, uh, disagreements in Africa that have tend to like, look at the solution to come only from the part of the gun. We can talk about uh, Mamadou Dumbuya, we can talk about Asimi Goita. Of course, that is a point where we think, uh, according to my brother um, Enoku, that nobody ever thought Africa could stand up to resist the Western world, and it happened in 2022. As we are scoring it a mark, let's also be asking ourselves, as we are standing to resist, to resist them using guns, where are those guns coming from? How much have we spent in this 2022 to procure these guns to fight the colonial master? If you look at it in summary, you will discover that uh, at one point this morning, I was reading a document about uh, the Sudanese government voting. That is 6.600 million U.S. dollars just for their military operations in a, in, a, in a period of four months. Then you tend to ask yourself, was there no other better method to have handled such things so that we could invest such amount into the economic and infrastructural development of the continent. I mean, you discover that in the course of this, human resources have been lost. Human lives have been lost. Human, yeah, human capital and the financial capital that Africa so much needs at this point in time, more than any other continent. When you strike a bank, you discover that we have been running at a loss. Despite the fact that you stand up to fight somebody whom you call a colonial master, in the course of the fighting, Let's evaluate what have we lost in terms of fighting such a person. Because, like I've always said, in a war, the two warring factions, they never win. Nobody wins a war. The only body who wins a war is the arms dealer. And that arms dealer who wins a war will surely have a spirit or a phantom somewhere that should be manipulating so that the wars should continue. So I want to think that instead of appreciating ourselves 
make it appraisal that we have been able to fight the colonial master. Let's be asking ourselves as we are facing out of 2022, after engaging in many battles across the continent, what has been the benefit? It is true, we can pride ourselves that we never knew that before now we could st stand up and, and, and fight back, and fight back. And I think as we are asking that question, the most interesting part of it should be, have we been able to fight as a collective person or we have been able to fight as an individual? I think that's the biggest question the African continent should be asking herself as we face out of 2022. Because no one said it was ever going to be easy. But then we could make it easier if we put our heads together and we put our thinking caps completely. And of Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous.